Busy. Everything. So Ex- expanding. So busy. Expanding, getting bigger every day. Uh, new technologies. And I think if you have an Alexa or one of those things, ask it to play the AM quickie and, and find out if it's in your news feed. I don't know. I tried to do it last night and uh, to make a, I don't even know what they call it, a skill or something. And uh, for all I know, I may have broken the whole system, taken it down from the inside, which I'm totally, I'm certainly, I would be excited at that. Taking down Bezos with your morning podcast. If I would be equally happy if it played as a skill or just destroyed the entire platform. Got a national One of those two things would be great. And if I could do all that with just the, I don't know, the half an hour that it took me to noodle around that stuff. Um, I had to like do like a special terms of service, like how much data are we taking from people? And I just wanted to put like, isn't there a place I could just put zero? We're not taking any data. We're probably the only app that exists that doesn't have one of those PK kits or whatever it is that follow you around wherever you are. That's what all the apps are about, incidentally, folks. In fact, uh, I don't have time to get into this today, but I probably will tomorrow. There is a report out from a Scientific American. Where do I have that? I'll find. Oh, yeah, here it is. Scientific American. It's not. I don't think the report was from them. It was a um, a preprint paper on X, uh, rxiv.org by economist Keith Chen of University of California. And they matched up anonymous location data from 10 million smartphones to 93,000 polling places. And um, and there's only 110,000 polling places in the country. Voters in predominantly black neighborhoods waited 29% longer on average than those in white neighborhoods to vote. 29% longer, a third longer. They were also about 74% more likely to wait for more than a half an hour. Now, there's two things that I take from the survey. One, our phones are a little bit terrifying. It's all anonymous. Doesn't have to be. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, if you're getting it anonymously, you can, you know. But, um, and this data, they, so what happens with an app, and this is sort of a side note, because I think it's obviously the, the, the voter suppression is far more important in some respects, but, but people should be aware of this. There are things that they build apps and they put these like little, um, I don't know, they're like um, uh, cookies or stuff that follow you when you browse on online. But this is more, it follows you when you browse in the real world on these apps. You get a free app. That's what's going on there. Even paid apps, they put it in there because it's another source of revenue. We don't do this. If I knew how to do it, I probably would if I could sell a lot of money on it. But I, you know. I, I, I got too many things to do right now than to dig into this and find out how to monetize it. But the um, they follow you around and they'll sell this data to hedge funds that are, um, you know, own like a supermarket chain. And where should we place a supermarket chain? We can tell that people are bouncing around. The highest foot traffic is around here or this is where people are going at three o'clock in the afternoon, which we know from other data sets is the high, you know, the time of the grocery shopping. I don't know, stuff like this. This is a good use of that information uh, to the extent if we're going to have it. Long lines are estimated to have deterred between 500 and 700,000 people from casting their ballot in 2012. These problems led to the creation of the Presidential Commission on Election Administration, which issued a 2014 report that set forth a standard no citizen should have to wait more than 30 minutes to vote. But that is should because we have no federal right to vote in this country because... When we were in Reconstruction and we were trying to establish a federal right to vote, many of these states, we placated the southern states and probably a certain amount of bigotry in the north as well, but particularly the southern states. 
there was, I think, two or three options on the table, as it were, as to what the 13th Amendment would be. And uh, it did end up being just like, you cannot deny, uh, you know, uh, uh, f- basically former slaves from voting or anybody, et cetera. It was, as opposed to an affirmative right that cannot be in any way in- uh, infringed upon. Like, you cannot have any other... Te- like, it, it's one thing to say you can't deny someone to, uh, the right to vote because of their race. It's another to say you can't deny anybody the right to vote because of their race, and you cannot deny them a right to vote for any reason. Period. And the exclusion of that latter point that I just said was why they were able to have from 19, 1893, I think it is, maybe a little bit earlier, through to 1965, things like poll taxes or literary t- literacy uh, tests to vote. Because they wanted to exclude black people from voting. They were willing to exclude po- uh, poor white people in many respects too from voting. Very few people voted at that time anyways. And... um so we don't have no federal right to vote in this country. There are prohibitions about what can prevent you from voting. But we don't have an f- affirmative federal right to vote. And so we know from this data that if you are African American, you are far more likely to have obstacles to voting. And this is just wait times at voting places. I think if they also, uh, you cross-reference this with a, uh, uh, a study that shows what polling places have been closed over the course of whenever a Republican gets in charge of the Secretary of State uh, position, you will find the vast majority of those are in African-American neighborhoods, Latino neighborhoods, poor, uh, poor neighborhoods. So uh, this is just one tool in which the Republican Party um, exerts its dominance. And I think the Democrats have not been sufficient on this, but that is because of their uh, allergy to uh, power. (laughs) Um, I think they're aware that they want more black participation in voting, not less, because what? Donald Trump is polling at, 2% 2% with black people. And uh, I think, you know, Bush really was pushing the envelope. I think he got to maybe 10%. Um, but uh, that's that story there. So in other words, um, we're redoing our app. Um, 